welcome students today we shall see about metals and non metals in detail we see many things around us they are made up of different materials some are hard and some soft elements in general are classified into metals non metals metalloids and finally noble gases metals in general are classified into metals non metals metalloids and noble gases elements are made up of only one kind of atoms you would have seen the periodic table chart in your chemistry lab can you guess how many elements are there in the periodic table chart yes you are right there are 118 elements in the periodic table chart now let us see about the physical properties of the metals in detail the first property is physical state physical state in general all metals are solids at room temperature and there is an exception for mercury which is a liquid metal there are few other elements which become liquid when they go when the temperature is slightly raised above the room temperature example for that you can give it as gallium cesium rubidium etc and the second property will be density all metals are generally very dense in nature that is they have high density exception is there here exception is there for sodium and potassium these two are called as soft metals and uh, these two can be very easily cut with a knife you have another element called osmium which is very hard so that it can even scratch glass and the next property will be hardness metals are generally hard and here also there is an exception sodium and potassium are soft metals they are not hard in nature and the next property will be tensile strength metals possess high tensile strength and there is an exception for here and uh, zinc arsenic and antimony are elements which possess low tensile strength and the next one will be conductivity metals have high conductivity power that is they can conduct heat and electricity very well and uh, here you can see silver and copper are very good conductors of heat and electricity whereas bit bismuth is a poor conductor of electricity and the next property we can see sonorous when metals are hit hard they produce sound this property of the metals is called as sonorous and uh, that's why we use these metals to make the temple bells and the next property will be seventh property malleability metals can be beaten into thin sheets and this property is called as malleability metals are highly malleable in nature uh, for example you can take aluminum aluminum can be beaten into very thin sheets and we call them as aluminum foils which are used for food storage the next property will be ductility metals are highly ductile that means they could be drawn into thin wires very thin wires without breaking for example copper wires can be drawn into very thin wires without any breakage this property is called as ductility and the next property will be melting point and boiling point metals have high melting point and very high boiling point and there is an exception for this exception for sodium 
potassium mercury and gallium these four elements have low melting point and boiling point and the last point will be luster metals possess very good shining properties that's why we call them as lustrous but here also there is an exception for calcium which has low luster or absolutely nil luster it does not shine the same properties next we'll see about non metals the same property the first one will be physical state here non metals exist as solids liquids and gases too solid non metal you can cite example as sulfur and phosphorus liquid non metal you can give bromine as example and gaseous non metal oxygen and nitrogen so this is the first property and the second property is density here non metals have very low density except for diamond diamond has high density and this diamond is an allotrope of carbon so again diamond are diamond is highly dense the next property will be hardness all non metals possess low hardness that means they are very soft metals and the, there is an exception here again diamond is very hard and the tensile strength and here they have low tensile strength exception is there for carbon fibers and these carbon fibers have very high tensile strength so that they could be compared even to a steel fiber okay the next property will be conductivity here conductivity metals possess low conduct sorry non metals have low conduction for heat and electricity and there is an exception here graphite is a good conductor of electricity next is sonorous property here no sonorous property because when non metals are hit hard they don't produce any sound so they lack that sonorous property and the next property will be malleability non metals when they are hit very hard they tend to break that means they are brittle in nature and they are not malleable so they lack malleability no malleability and again ductility here non metals the usually non metals could not be drawn into thin wires but there is an exception here for carbon fibers alone carbon fibers could be drawn into very thin wires the next property will be melting point and boiling point non metals have generally low melting point and low boiling point and there is an exception here carbon and silicon they have high melting point and boiling point and the last one luster that is the shining property non metals lack the lustrous property here also you have an exception for iodine and uh, graphite iodine and graphite are lustrous in nature that's all about the properties of physical properties of metals and non metals next we'll go to the uses of metals when we are going to the uses of metal the first one we'll see copper copper is used for making electric cables then the second one will be silver and gold silver and gold they are used for making ornaments and the next one mercury mercury is used in thermometers and thermometers and barometers for what purpose it is used because mercury has very high density and uniform expansion and the fourth one will be lead lead is used in all automobile batteries for making automobile batteries lead is used and the next property will be aluminum aluminum is used in making cables electric cables not only that aluminum is employed very much in aeronautical industries for that purpose aluminum is used and finally iron is used for all engine works and bridge works okay these are the uses of metals next we'll move on to 
uses of non metals the first one will be hydrogen hydrogen flame is used in welding purposes hydrogen flame is used for welding purposes and second one hydrogen is used as a rocket fuel and third property diamond is used for making jewelry and the next one graphite is used for making pencils graphite is used in making pencils and sulfur is used for vulcanization purpose vulcanization purpose phosphorus is used in making matches nitrogen is used in the preparation of i'm sorry in the manufacture of ammonia and chlorine is used as a disinfectant and bleaching agent it's used as a disinfectant and bleaching agent these are the uses of metals and non metals in detail by that we complete metals and non metals next we'll move on to metalloids what are metalloids those elements which have the property of both the metals and non metals they are called as metalloids example for that you can cite it as silicon germanium etc silicon germanium boron these are the example for metalloids they have both metallic character and non metallic character next we will see the physical properties the first one will be they are usually solids in nature second one they form alloys with alloys with other met elements they form alloys with other elements and the third property especially silicon and germanium these are used for semiconductors and the physical properties of the metalloids shows that these metalloids have metallic character and the chemical properties of the metalloids show that they have non metallic character physical property shows their metallic character and chemical property shows their non metallic character that's all about metalloids next we'll see the uses of metalloids boron is used in fire industry and silicon is used in electronic devices that's all about metalloids next we'll see compounds now what are compounds compounds they are that is a very pure form of the element that is elements that are, these compounds are very pure and they are formed by the chemical combination of two or more elements in a fixed ratio by mass example for that you can say water in water two hydrogen and one oxygen is present two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen combines in the ratio of 2 is to 1 so this is a fixed ratio by mass it combines in a particular ratio that's why it has formed water next we'll see the classification compounds can be classified into two types inorganic and organic here inorganic compounds first let us see about inorganic compounds compounds which are obtained from non living sources are called as inorganic compounds and example for that you can take chalk and the compounds which are obtained from living sources like plants animals etc and they are called as organic sources example for that you can take it as protein that's all about the classification next we'll see compounds in solid state compounds in liquid state and compounds in gaseous state first compounds in solid state example for that you can cite sodium chloride and sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide is usually seen in pellets calcium carbonate these are the example for compounds in solid state next will be compounds in liquid state the first example will be water sulfuric acid nitric acid etc 
and the next one will be compounds in gaseous state. Example here you can give sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide etc. Next we will move on finally to the uses of compounds. The first use let us see how it is used. Let us first see the different compounds and uh, what are the components in it and finally how it is used. First water is a compound here and the components present here will be hydrogen and oxygen. It is used as a universal solvent and the next one will be sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, sodium is present hydrogen is present, oxygen is present and it is used in the manufacture of soaps. Next will be sodium chloride, here sodium and chlorine is present and it, this is used as a preservative, it is used as a preservative. Next one calcium hydroxide, here calcium, oxygen, hydrogen is present this is used, used for whitewashing. Next one washing soda which is nothing but sodium carbonate and here it has sodium carbon and oxygen. This is used for cleaning purposes and next one we can give nitric acid. It contains hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen. This nitric acid is used in the manufacture of dyes, explosives, fertilizers etc. By that we complete metals and non-metals. Thank you children.